No, they're not here. It's just as well for them they're not. Poor things. The deaths of those girls must be avenged tonight. We'll kill those monsters. Well, we've got to try and find them. They mustn't escape. Come on, let's go. Where are they? I saw him with my own eyes. He was running away with a woman. Then he disappeared. If all goes well for us this time, they won't be able to get away from us tonight. If I find them, I'll stab them with this pitchfork. Mark my words. I'll make them pay for killing my sister. It's the only way to destroy these monsters forever. No. We better try to make a break for it. Otherwise, they're sure to catch us. of the castle before daybreak. I risk breaking this whole carriage and destroying these horses. I will give you gold to get a completely new carriage and a new team of horses. You must try harder. My life may be at stake. I'll try, but at your expense. Oh! Oh! Daybreak is not far away. 
Move now. Give me a hand here. All right, all right. It's true what I've heard, that all madmen are not locked in the madhouse. Now, Beauty, come on. It's home now. Oh! Oh! I'm so delighted you were able to come. We couldn't miss this, dear. It was a perfectly marvelous idea of yours to spend some time in this wonderful castle. How romantic it all is, Louise. You are so fortunate. Wolfgang. Romantic? Ah, yes. But only I know what it took to make it become what it is tonight. You should have seen what state it was reduced to. The house was covered with cobwebs and dust. I'll admit my first impression was discouraging. But then I heard a voice calling me. A strange sensation. The voice was saying, stay here. The voice you heard was mine, dear. This place pleased me at once. And I'm so glad you, you liked do. it. I well, think it's beautiful. Louise and I are oh, honored yes, that you were here tonight. Oh. Thank you. These are for you, Louise. Thank you, Racy. I hope you like them. Thank you. And thank you, Corinne. You've met my governess, haven't you? And this pretty little girl is the gardener's daughter. You may stay if you want to. Thank you. Excuse me, I must attend to a few things. My governess, Corinne, is also a very good friend of mine. And now Louise must play for us. I'd love to. Come now, let's go and hear my wife play. I want a bottle of the best claret from the wine cellar.
You were really marvelous, dear. Bravo, Louise. A composition worthy of a great master. What gave you your inspiration? It was this house. The atmosphere of the park. Excuse me, Wolfgang. I'm feeling a bit dizzy. My brain's swimming. Since it's our party, surely we ought to open the ball together. They will understand, my dear, later. But you must us. dance, please. Why don't you come and sit down, Louise? I won't be gone long. strange type. Do you happen to know him, Marquesa? No, Wolfgang. Perhaps he's a friend of Count Hellman. May I have the honor? Well, I'm not. Splendid couple, don't they, Wolfgang? What were you saying, Marquesa? Aren't you jealous, Wolfgang? Uh, of course not. Huh. I think he's fascinating. Personally, I'd say he's sinister. Very much so. What's your opinion? I do wish he'd chosen me instead of Louise. You're chattering away like silly school children, but who is he? It's nothing. You must all go on with the party. I've had a bit too much excitement. I'll go to my bedroom for a moment. Please dance and enjoy yourselves. Wolfgang will remain with I'll you. come with you. Excuse me. Wolfgang, how is Louise? Poor thing. These last few days, she was so worried about the party, she tired herself too much. Could there be a little stranger on the way? It would be such a pleasure for everyone at the party. We do want to know the truth. Please tell us. We're friends. We won't say a word. Now you must tell all of us. Ah, I thought I guessed your little secret. Splendid, magnificent. But she might have informed us all, that pretty little wife of yours. Maybe I could help her. I have been a mother myself, you know. No, Marquise, I think it is simply this, that after all this work about the house, she is just extremely tired. 
And now, if you'll excuse me, I must go to see the rest of my guests. I do not want to offend any of my friends. How presumptuous he is. We were not like that in my young days. They think they know about all these things. They are foolish, and they lack respect. Have you noticed how she let herself be embraced by that stranger while dancing? By the way, were you able to find out where he comes from? He must be from abroad, because no one knows who he is. The important thing is that Luis knows him intimately, I think. I've no doubt my hunch is right. Did you see how fast he went away with the arrival of Wolfgang? A strategic retreat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd be very interested to know where she could be found now. And with whom? Please, what are you doing here? No. What do you want of me? Leave this instant. Go away. Go away. Oh. Let me go. Oh. You're so cold, you make me shudder. Who are you? Why have you come here? Open the door. Is something wrong, sir? My wife won't answer. Louise, open the door. Madam, are you all right? Open the door for us. I'm sorry, I'd fallen asleep. I confess that for one moment there, I was worried. You are so pale. Are you sure you're not feeling badly? No, I was only trying to rest a little. I'm just a bit tired, I think. Tomorrow I'll be all right. It's best that you stay in bed tonight. I feel very guilty for having disturbed you. But our friends are waiting. Don't worry, I'll explain to them. If you need me at all, please call me. All right. Now sleep well. You need to get a good night's rest. It was dusk when the two travelers finally arrived at the lake shore, and black storm clouds were gathering in the sky. The boat they had expected was moored to a post, and the ferryman was standing beside it, waiting for them. He was wearing a long, dark cloak with a hood which covered his head, and muffled his voice, making his words indistinct. Bertram paid, and he told the boatman to leave. Before they were halfway across, the storm broke in its full fury. Lightning flashed in the sky, and thunder rolled. The boat heaved and lurched, and the passengers were flung from side to side. Bertram left the frightened girl, moved to the ferryman's side, and asked if they shouldn't turn the small vessel back. Suddenly, the lightning revealed his features, and he found himself staring into the face of his bitterest foe. That's enough reading for this morning. It's time for lunch. Come on, Louise. Let's go and eat now. You are very thoughtful, but I'm not hungry.
Madam, please. You must eat. I don't want to. Now, Louise, you had better eat a little something, my dear. You'll eat for me. That's a good girl. I'm very proud of you. Why, my dear, that's Crazy. more like it. The more you eat, the prettier you'll both grow. Corinne. Corinne. The doctor has arrived. You may tell the oh, doctor that the Count will wait for him here, in the garden. Very well. <laughs> Raisy, I want you to be a good girl. You see, she promised she would. <laughs> Count, yes, the doctor has arrived. Ah, yes, he's an old school friend of mine, Dr. Hunt. It will be a good opportunity to speak of Madame's illness. Hmm. Yes, yes, that's a good idea. We'll ask his advice. And you, Raisy? You aren't afraid of the doctor, are you? <laughs> You're a big girl now. He's a good friend. Ah, here he is now. I hope I'm not disturbing him. No, far from it, doctor. Please sit down. May we offer you something to eat or drink? Please, doctor. Nothing, thank you. As you wish. Have you been ill recently? No. You're looking a bit pale, I think. May I feel your pulse, please? Thank you. Your pulse is weak, you know. Let me ask you, have you suffered from anemia at all? No, doctor, not that I'm aware of. But you've no sign of fever. There's nothing the matter with me. Well, what do you think, doctor? I don't know. Judging from the symptoms, I would say she was anemic, as I said. But she's always been so healthy. In any case, I can't give her diagnosis now. Well, I shall come and pay her another visit tomorrow, and maybe then I shall be able to be more precise. Now, don't alarm her. Let her have plenty of rest, and above all, let her eat good meals. Yes, of course. We'd better go back now. She might get suspicious. Yes, perhaps we'd better. Doctor?
I knew that you would come to me. I knew you were calling me. Where are you? I can't see you. Who can you be to have this mysterious power over me? Who can you be that you poisoned all the love I bore my husband and made me become your slave? Show yourself to me. Where are you hiding? This black night makes me fear you. The night is my element. It cannot frighten me. You too belong to the dark, for in you the light of the stars is transformed into a being of flesh and blood. And what the night sky has lost, I now see standing before me, more beautiful than a thousand stars. All this I see in you. But I don't see such great beauty in me. Your mirror cannot show it. It only diminishes you. It cannot possibly do you justice. The reflection you see there bears no resemblance to the reality. Ah, could you but see yourself as you are in my heart? You might then see your real self. In my heart, you are not the woman that you think you are. You are a part of a greater mystery. Tell me who you are and what you want. I come from the past. I exist in the present and in the future. I'm here to offer you a life of passion for centuries everlasting. A realm which is waiting for you. A beautiful world of strange colors, colors which as yet you cannot even imagine, but which I shall teach you to see. They are hidden in the darkness of our realm. Louise, what are you doing here? I just wanted a breath of air. Now, please take me in again. Oh! Louise! Excuse me, Louise. I'll go with the doctor to the door. Doctor? Goodbye. Medical science can't be of any further use. She has no obvious malady, but she might be dying. Listen to me, Wolfgang. There's only one chance of saving her. Take your carriage and leave immediately. Go to Vienna. Ask for Professor Nitsch. He could help her. I confess I'm beaten. It's a bitter blow after all these long years as a doctor to have to admit I'm defeated. Go now. Don't waste any more time. 
Goodbye, Wolfgang. He said that you will soon be better. Louise, dearest, I have to go to Vienna. Tell the coachman to prepare the carriage. I must go and buy your new medicine, and tomorrow you'll feel better. I can't wait until then. I know it, Wolfgang. See the sun there at the window. My flesh is yearning to feel the heat of its rays. Wolfgang, do help me. Please, I must have sun. I beg you, Wolfgang. Yes, of course, my dearest. I must go now. I shall certainly return before nightfall. Dr. Nitsch? He's not here. What do you want? I must see the doctor urgently. Oh, now he's busy on a call. I've got my work. Please, wait a minute. Can you tell me if he'll be back? I wouldn't know, sir. It really all depends. He's only gone to a nearby town. They say there are strange creatures near here, but I don't think so. They say such silly things these days. Uh, yes, certainly you're right. But may I come in and wait? You might have said so before that you wanted to wait. Of course, you may do come in. As Dr. Nietzsche is always telling me, if anyone wants us, they must wait for us. Won't you come this way? I'll show you to his study. No, thank you. I prefer to wait here. As you wish. Dr. Nitsch also prefers it here when he has a moment to himself. Will you excuse me, sir? I'm so sorry I kept you waiting. Make yourself comfortable. A cigar? No, thank you. Uh, what can I do for you? Dr. Hunt sent me to you. Dr. Hunt? Oh, yes, I remember him. He says that you're the last hope I have. My poor wife, she's dying. He's at a loss. 
because although she's in a state of extreme depression, he cannot explain the origin of her malady. My only chance of saving her lies with you. I cannot do miracles. I can only do my best. Well, now then, are there any obvious symptoms you observe? Please forgive me. I'd rather talk in the carriage. She may now be weaker and even be... Now, don't despair. I'll get my bag. I'll be right back. Everything you've just told me about your wife's behavior. You haven't omitted anything? No, why should I hide anything? Never mind. The symptoms are pretty clear, I'm afraid. I don't want to frighten you, but your wife is threatened by grave dangers. There's not a single second to be lost. I'm afraid you're right. She seems to be growing weaker every day. That is why I have come to you, Dr. Nitsch. I put myself in your hands. Dr. Hart recommended me to you because you're the only person who can cure my poor wife. I will do everything in my power. It is an evil I have been fighting for years, many years. And I shall have no peace until I have utterly destroyed it. Otherwise, I shall have to leave to others the task of completing my work. You will have to have great courage. And above all, you will have to follow all my instructions, although they may seem to you unusual. It is not only a physical evil. To science must be added the power of faith. The most important thing is to isolate the patient completely. Nobody must come near her. We mustn't trust a soul. Is there any cure that can work, doctor? Yes, there is. And there's one important thing I must explain. It is vital when treating these diseases to attack the cause of the illness. But in your wife's case, that cause must be destroyed completely. They are very cunning and they have perfected through the ages the art of deceit. One should be prepared for anything from them to have any chance of victory. Who are they? The vampires. The vampires? Wolfgang has returned. Who will have the courage to tell him the truth? We'd better go down and tell him the news. How's my wife feeling now? What has happened? Tell me. Louise. We both discovered her in front of the window, with her eyes looking out at the moonlight. She seemed so peaceful. Uh, uh, uh. No, Corinne. It's better to leave him alone for a while. It will be necessary to call a priest. Will you see to it? 
And your wife might take Razy home. It's better, I think. What a tragedy. Poor dear lady. Wolfgang, you will need all your courage. I know it's been a terrible shock. She's gone. What's happened? Quickly, follow me. Where to? To the park. They've taken her away. We must hurry. She's disappeared, Corrine. Disappeared? But that's impossible. Go to your room at once. Close the windows and don't move. There's no doubt about it. It's exactly as I feared. Now I think it's best to separate. But if you see anything, call me. I felt that I was in your presence, even though I never heard you arrive. I know. I, too, am always close to you, even when you are far away. I can feel your breathing when you are sleeping and when you're waking. I can feel the blood throbbing in your veins. What has made me want you? I don't fear your power. You've no need to fear. Oh, I know that now. You only fear the dark when you're not used to it. But why have you returned to me? It's the day that begins now to make me afraid. My thoughts tried in vain to stay interested in the things which made me love life. The joy of living a new day. All this seems to have vanished. It has no meaning. Before long, all that will be only a memory. Louise! Louise! 
Louise, darling. Oh, Louise, hold me tight. Dearest. I need your warmth so much. You're alive. I thought I would never see you again. Thank God for that. I've suffered so much these last few hours. I felt as if life had separated us forever. It was more than I could bear. I believe death was preferable to life without you, Louise, darling. Don't ever leave me. Let's go back to the castle. They're looking oh, for us. Oh, please wait a moment, dear. done to me. What are you doing? Louise! Come here. Quick. You will need a blood transfusion right away. your arm bent for a while. As for you, you better eat a big steak and drink a good glass of beer. Listen to me, Wolfgang. It is necessary, first of all, to discover where Louise's body is hidden, and this must be done before daybreak. I'll find her, Doctor. Not until then will you be able to consider yourself out of their power. And Louise finally will enjoy that peace which only comes with true death. It's terrible. I no longer know if what I believe in is good or bad. I have no doubts about your honesty, Doctor. But what you are asking me to do concerns my poor wife. No, Wolfgang. Louise is no more your wife. She's no more the Louise you knew. And it's to this that you will have to resign yourself. It's for the best, I assure you. This sacrifice is difficult. You will need great courage and decision. What must I do, Doctor? Nothing. You stay here. It might seem too horrible to you what I shall have to do. It's almost dawn and still nothing has appeared. And yet I'm sure they're hiding somewhere in these tunnels. But where? We must have searched every corner. Who'd have thought a coffin would be hard to find? Let's look again. Soon, under cover of darkness, the two vampires will leave their lonely tombs in search of the only food that can keep them alive. Human blood. It's absolutely essential for them. We must be sure to warn Peter to watch over his house and be ready to act the moment they appear. He should know that only fire and the cross can destroy them. Except for these remedies, no power can prevail. We must go there before it is too late. Wolfgang, the governess, and the child are in mortal danger.
Jack was cunning, and we must be just as clever. You will think that I ask you far too much, but it's necessary. Tonight I will need you to set my trap. You will stay here and wait. No, while Doctor. I... You must understand that to me this doesn't make sense. This is ridiculous as well as painful for me. Oh, I know. This makes no difference to you. Because all that counts with you is to realize your ambition, to impress your friends and prove your brilliance. But you ought to realize that I, for one, have had enough of this comedy. Be quiet. Listen to me. I'll explain to you. It is not a question of defending any one individual. But of the whole of mankind being in gravest danger, we cannot remain indifferent to this. With your help, I'm about to kill this thing at its roots, so that the peril cannot inexorably spread even further. The moment has come at last, when vampires will disappear from the earth. Imagine all the children, all the women who must be saved from contamination by these monsters. They must be banished, exterminated without pity. Once again, I have to ask your forgiveness. I have no doubt they'll arrive soon. And I shall be waiting even if I have to spend all of the night awake. I feel I ought to say how grateful I am for what you're doing, Dr. Nitsch. I don't know if all these precautions of yours will be sufficient to keep these creatures at bay, but I have a feeling that all of this is useless. However, if anything should happen to me, I want you to promise to free me forever from this appalling fate. I can't bear the thought that I might have to wander throughout eternity contaminating other human beings. Yes, certainly, but it won't be necessary. Would you mind if I stayed here for the rest of the night? I'm afraid of remaining alone. Poor little Corinne. These have been difficult days for you, too. Of course you can stay here. I shall be of no bother to anybody. I'll just sit here on this chair. Very well, then. You might be of help to him.
They have not come yet. You'll be needing all your courage soon. Any moment now, they ought to be here. What's the matter? Corinne! No. No.
sorry for you, but I have no choice. God will have pity on your soul. Only a miracle can save him. We'll have to give him more blood transfusions. If that's what's needed to save him, I'll be glad to help you, Doctor. We will require at least a couple of men donating their blood in order to save him. I'll find them for you, Doctor. We do not have much time to lose. His pulse is extremely weak. Hurry up. Don't waste a minute. In the meantime, Doctor, I can give you some of my blood. I'll hurry, sir. Is he better, doctor? You must try to get a little rest, at least for a while. You haven't eaten or had any sleep for days. I thank you. Not for now. Afterwards when I'm quite certain that we have saved him. It all depends on how he passes the night. Won't you have something to drink, at least? Yes, I will. Where's Raisy? Why isn't she with you? I left her outside. She was playing in the garden. Is the Count better? I hope to know in the morning. Please take this. While I'm getting the coffee ready, why don't you have some fruit? No, thank you. Coffee will be enough. I don't need anything else for now. Very well.
Where'd you learn to play that haunting music? I learned it listening to Louise play it the night that you gave the party. I heard it just now as I was lying there in bed. I wondered if Louise could have returned. Do you know where the doctor is? He went in the garden with Daddy to look for the bad man. But what are those men like? I can't imagine. Can you? I feel like walking for a while in the park. Will you come with me? Right now? My father said we mustn't go out at night. You don't need to be afraid. I won't leave you alone. Besides, I want to show you some wonderful new hiding places. in the park at night time. Do you? Please, Wolfgang, answer me. Racy, keep still. Let's get Racy. Not now, please. She won't be hurt. We mustn't let them out of our sight. We'd better not stay here. Why, Wolfgang? It's quite safe here, Racy. Open the door in the name of God! It's useless. We'll have to break it down. Daddy! Daddy! 
It's all over now. Daddy. <laughs> Don't kill him! Stop, Doctor! He saved Racy from the vampire! I almost killed you. Dear Racy, you've been badly frightened, but now all that has passed. He won't come back here? No, you don't have to worry. Your dolls are waiting to play with you. Go and have fun. Next time, I can tell you many, many stories if you really want me to. Do you? Yes. Goodbye. Bye. I advise you to take good care of her. We must be very careful that what happened to her last night should not affect the development of her tender young mind. But small children quickly forget. With time, all this will be erased. Because as always in nature, there's both good and bad. After every storm, the sun shines. In its light, we see a proof of God's love. Life has many strange secrets, but I think I'm talking too much. Ah, here's the carriage. My bag, Peter. It's taken care of, sir. I just put it in the car. Fine, you. then. We'll see you out. Well, this is the moment to say goodbye. Thank you, Dr. Nitsch. 